Hello, we begin to study bioorganic chemistry. This science integrates organic chemistry and biochemistry. Topic of the first part of the lecture, nomenclature and classification of organic compounds. The second part of the lecture will be devoted to the acidity and basicity of organic compounds. Bioorganic chemistry studies the structure and properties of substances involved in life processes. Organic compounds are the central substances of which all living things on this planet are made. Look at these examples. Organic compounds are compounds of carbon and their functional derivatives. Organic compounds are classified according to the following features. A structure of molecular framework and the presence of functional groups in a molecule. According to the first classification, organic compounds are divided into acyclic and cyclic. Saturated acyclic compounds contain only single bonds. Unsaturated acyclic compounds contain double and triple bonds. Cycles can be formed only by carbon atoms or contain heteroatoms. Cyclic compounds can be aromatic and non-aromatic. All organic compounds are grouped into classes based on characteristic features called functional groups. A functional group is an atom or a group of atoms within a molecule that serves as a site of chemical reactivity. Some of the functional groups and the corresponding classes of organic compounds are presented in this table. Molecules with one functional group belong to monofunctional compounds. Polyfunctional compounds contain several identical functional groups, for example, chloroform and glycerol. Molecules with different functional groups are considered as heterofunctional compounds. They may be related to several classes. Today, in organic chemistry, several types of nomenclatures are used. Firstly, the trivial nomenclature. At the earliest stage of organic chemistry, each new compound was usually named on the basis of its source or its evident properties. Such names are known as trivial or common names. The next is systematic nomenclature. Systematic nomenclature is an arrangement of terms that describes complete structure of organic molecules. The first systematic nomenclature appeared as far back as 1892. It was then perfected by a commission of the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry and is known now as the IUPAC rules 
o dhe IUPAC në mëngoqe. Veza dhe Toms that I used to construct compound names. Look at them. Parent name. A part of the name used for the formation of particular name according to the appointed rules. For example, the name ethanol is derived from Ethan. The parent name may be both systematic or trivial. The next is characteristic group. This term is practically equal to, to the term functional group. For example, the amino group, the carbonyl group, the oxa group, the carboxyl group. Principal group is the characteristic group chosen for expression as a suffix in a particular name. This group has no other advantages over reminder groups. Substituent. Any atom or group replacing hydrogen of a parent compound. Radical. A part of molecule that remains after removal of one or more hydrogen atoms from it. For example, the radicals such as methyl and methylene are derived from methane. Locant. A numeral or a letter showing a position of a substituent or multiple bond in a parent structure. Multiplying affix. Syllables di, tri, tetra, which are used to indicate a set of identical substituents or multiple bonds. There are eight basic nomenclature systems. Two of them are shown on the slide. These two nomenclatures, especially substitutive nomenclature, will be considered in greater detail. Let's start with uh, substitutive nomenclature. The particular name of a polyfunctional compound represents a complex word that consists of a root, a suffix, and prefixes. Look at this picture. There are two types of characteristic groups. One type is designated in a name only as prefixes. Nitro group, halogens, and some other groups belong to this type. They are listed in the lower part of table. Most of characteristic groups may be cited either as suffixes or as prefixes. But only one kind of group, principal group, is to be cited as a suffix. Within these groups, a conventional order of priority has been established. It means the principal group is occurring as high as possible in table. All other characteristic groups are then cited as prefixes. Multiplying affixes and locants are added as necessary. The generic name of saturated acyclic hydrocarbons is alkanes. Examples are given in table. The name of the alkanes should be remembered. 
The prefixes sec, secondary, and third, tertiary, refer to the degree of alkyl substitution at a carbon atom. There are four types of carbons that differ in their alkyl environment. If the carbon atom is bonded to only one carbon, the former is referred as a primary carbon. A secondary carbon has two other carbons bonded to it, and so on, as shown on the picture. The names of some unsaturated and branched hydrocarbons are shown on the slide. Note the suffixes in these names. Suffix in is the suffix of alkenes. Such compounds have one double bond. Suffix ein is the suffix of alkynes. Such compounds contain one triple bond. Hexadiene have two double bonds. Octatriene have three double bonds. The names of saturated monocyclic hydrocarbons are formed by adding the prefix cyclo to the name of unbranched alkane with the same number of carbon atoms. Unsaturated monocyclic hydrocarbons are named and numbered similarly to acyclic analogs. The generic name of mono- and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons is aranes. The simplest representatives are called benzene and naphthalene. Several aromatic hydrocarbons with side chains may be used as parent structures for the names of compounds having non-principal characteristic groups. These are toline, cumene, xylene, and styrene. The most widespread aromatic radicals are shown on this slide. The next type of systematic nomenclature is radical functional nomenclature. The principles of the radical functional nomenclature are identical with those of the substitutive nomenclature except that suffixes are never used. Instead of the principal group being named as a suffix, the class name of a compound is expressed as one word and the remainder of the molecule as another. This nomenclature is often applied to names of esters and Amens. Look at the examples of constructing the systematic names. The name of alcohol is 2-butane-ol. The only carbon chain 
consist of four atoms. The principal characteristic group is expressed by the suffix all. We number the chain from the right starting closest to the OH group. The main chain in the ether is a three carbon chain of propane. This group is called methoxy and may be used only as a prefix. Together, this gives the name to methoxy propane. Another name given by radica functional nomenclature. The name of secondary amine is N-methyl-1-propane-amine. The locant N means that a substitution with methyl group was performed N nitrogen atom, but not at carbon. Using the radical functional nomenclature, we get simpler name methylpropylamine. This compound is named simply Butane on. The radical functional name of the compound is ethyl methyl ketone. Glutamic acid is one of natural amino acids. This trivial name is adopted by the IUPAC rules as the parent name. Systematically, it may be named to amino pentane dioic acid. The following compounds contain aromatic cyclase. The getter functional compound might be named as either a substituent phenol or a substituent aniline. The former should be taken as the parent name due to priority of phenols. Thus, the correct name is for aminophenol. The principal characteristic group in cuffage acid is the carboxyl group. Therefore, the parent name is assigned to a chain of free carbon. A substituent contain two own substituents. Together with locants, this leads to this full name. The principal characteristic group in histamine is situated in a side chain. The heterocyclic substituent retains its numbering. Thus, the systematic name of histamine is 24 
imidazalil ethen amin. In the second part of the lecture, the acid base properties of organic compounds will be considered. According to protolytic theory proposed by Branstad and Lowry, an acid is a neutral molecule or an ion that can donate a proton, and a base is a neutral molecule or an ion that can accept a proton. Let's start with quantification of acid-base properties. Ka is acidity constant. A stronger acid has a higher Ka, and a weaker acid has a lower Ka. pKa is acidity indicator. A stronger acid has a lower pKa, and a weaker acid has a higher pKa. Kb – basicity constant. A stronger base has a higher Kb, and a weaker base has a lower Kb. pKb – basicity indicator. A stronger base has a lower pKb, and a weaker base has a higher pKb. Acidity and basicity constants we can find in the reference. The strength of acids can be estimated by their structure. Factors affecting acid strength. The following. Firstly, kind of atom in the acid site. A part of a molecule that involves hydrogen together with an atom attached to it, it's called an acidic site. There are CH, NH, OH, SH acids. Acidity increases in this series. Look at these examples. Acidity indicated decreases and the strength of acids increases. The presence of a conjugated chain leads to an increase in acid properties. Alcohol doesn't have conjugated chain. Carboxylic acid has one conjugated chain. Keto acid has two conjugated chain, one and two. Acidity increases in this series. pKa decreases. Electron withdrawing substituents increase acidity. Electron donating substituents, on the contrary, lower acidity. Fluorine is an acceptor. Fluoracetic acid is stronger than acetic acid. For a qualitative assessment of the basicity, use the same factors as for the assessment of acidity. But the influence of these factors on the strengths of the base opposite. Dear students, you should take a lecture note and do your homework. Notes and homework should be in the copybook. This work will be evaluated in marks.
You can use this textbook in your homework. Thank you for your attention. Wish you success.